Thank you, Gene, for that. And welcome, everyone, to Clackamas United Church of Christ. As we say in the UCC, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. A uh, special welcome to anyone who might be visiting us, watching for the first time. Uh, we are just so glad that you are here. And uh, this is a very, this is a no stress zone when it comes to worship. So if this is your first time, uh, we invite you to participate however you would like. Uh, if you want to just sit back and watch, that's awesome. If you would like to participate, uh, I want you to know that in the description of the video, or if you're watching on the CUCC website, uh, you should be able to follow along with the liturgy there. Uh, special welcome to uh, Deanna from Waverly Heights UCC. I saw you uh, in the comment section, and I just wanted to say hi, Deanna, especially to you today, because your pastor, Sarah, is awesome. And I went to a protest Friday with Sarah and with our friend Erica. And Sarah and I were there, and the protest was led by a rabbi. And I want you all to hear this, because this is some ancient rabbinical wisdom that is good for our times today. And Rabbi Kolodny said that in Scripture, there is a plague in the book of Exodus. And do you know what happens after the plague? There's freedom. Freedom comes after the plague. And so, my friends, we are in the midst of many plagues, and I want you to know that in the midst of it, God is working. Uh, our Sarah and my rabbi friend reminded us that God is working in the midst of this to bring out freedom and redemption. And can somebody give me a hallelujah, an amen in the chat section, because we are already preaching and we are like three minutes into worship. So come on. All right, I'm done. Uh, no, I'm not done. We're going to do some more preaching later. But here are some uh, announcements for us today. Uh, I want you to know that if you are um, having... Uh, economic stress and you need some help getting some food, we've got some food for you. We can get some food boxes. So if you are in the Clackamas area and you need some food, uh, contact me over Facebook uh, at the church page or email me. You can find my email at the church website um, and we can get you some food. If you can find a way of getting it on Thursday at around 1030, if you can pick it up or if you've got a friend or a family member who can come pick it up for you, um, that would be ideal, but let me know. We can probably work something out. If you can't, I want you to know that we've got some food for you. So, uh, yes. So thank you for that. Um, and if you would like to make a special music offering to the church during our worship services, if you've got musical skills that you would like to offer, uh, we would love to, we would love to receive that and play it during our worship service. So if you are uh, watching for the first time today, or you've been on the journey with us while we are worshiping in this way, uh, and you'd like to offer a special musical gift, uh, please send that to me. I have to play it over YouTube in this app uh, that we are using. So if you can get it onto YouTube and uh, we can play it that way, we would love to play your uh, to play your gift. Um, hopefully, it has something to do with spirituality. Uh, the song, uh, and uh, if so, uh, please send it over, and we'll take a look at it. So, thank you for that. Uh, we will have time for prayers today. So, if you have prayers that you would like lifted up in uh, lifted up to God, you can put those in the chat section. And uh, we, when we come to our worship service today or our prayer time today, we will lift those up. Uh, you can follow along in the description of the video if you would like. And our final announcement is that uh, we're going to have our third Sunday in a row of coffee hour. So if you are watching this and you'd like to uh, meet up with people afterwards, uh, we've got people from, I don't know, various places uh, joining us for coffee hour after worship. So if you would like to do that uh, in the description of the video, there should be a Zoom link. 
uh, and you can find it there. If not, uh, Lori might be able to put that Zoom link in the chat section, but I think you can probably find it there. So we'd love to continue the conversation in our coffee hour afterwards. Again, low stress. So if you're an introvert like me, it's all good. Uh, just come hanging out, drinking a little coffee and uh, continuing the conversation. So friends, let us now continue our worship of God. I'm going to bring in our co-worship leaders today. You have uh, seen Jeff before, but today our dear sister Lita is going to help us uh, in our worship service too. Hi, Lita. Good morning, Adam. Good morning to you. It's great to see you. Thank you for being here. And hi, Jeff. Hi, Adam. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to have you here. So uh, we will now continue our worship service by lighting the peace candle. And um, friends, it is our tradition at the beginning of our worship service to light the peace candle, to center ourselves around the light and the love and the desire for justice that God has for us and for our world. Uh, so Jeff uh, is going to lead us in the lighting of the peace candle while Gavin lights the candle. I invite you to join us in lighting the peace candle. Will you read with me? We pray for peace in our hearts, in our homes, in our communities, in our nations, and in our worlds. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, thank you, Jeff and Lita. I don't, did you guys see Gavin's shirt? Gavin has like the best shirts. Come on over, Gav. Uh, this is a blast from my past. Friends, remember that TV show? Oh, so good. Yes. Uh, high five, Gavin. Rock on. Mid to late 90s TV shows that my son is watching. It's fantastic. Reliving my childhood. So good. Uh, okay, friends, let us continue with our scripture reading today. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. And this is a story where Peter, who during the last few weeks, you may have noticed that Peter has been struggling uh, in his faith. Peter is the one who sees Jesus walk on the water and asks Jesus to invite him to come out to the water, and Peter begins to drown. Peter is the one who, later in the story, uh, begins to betray and abandon Jesus after saying that he would stay with Jesus no matter what. And Jesus uh, calls Peter, says, you of little faith. Well, apparently... All you need to follow Jesus and to be a rock is a little bit of faith, and God can work with that. So, friends, I invite you to listen to these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. it will, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. 
Friends, here ends our reading this morning. May God bless us as we reflect upon it. We continue our worship service today with the call to worship led by Jeff and Lita. Please join us in the call to worship. They went to Jesus and he asked them, Who do you say that I am? They answered, You are the hypostatic union of differences and the eschatological manifestation of the ground of our being, the kerygma of which we find meaning in our interpersonal relationships. And Jesus said, What? Isn't that what they taught us in seminary? Faith doesn't have to be that hard. Life doesn't have to be that difficult. Sometimes we just have to share God's love. And so here we are, simply to sing, to celebrate, and to be together, and to worship God. Amen. 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 Friends, as I uh, sent that call to worship to uh, Jeff and to Lita, uh, Lita had some reflections that she wanted to offer up. Um, and so I wanted to invite Lita to just to share, share what that uh, call to worship brought out of you. Okay. Kiri is the Greek word for candle. Kirigma brings back many memories of my time growing up in the Greek church and about my father who was a chanter there. It means the holy sacred flame of our words and their meanings and to the essence of who we are as people. It's the call to worship of our very beings. Mm. The kerygma that uh, is that I learned in, it's a seminary word that uh, shouldn't be used during worship. <laughs> but the kerygma <laughs> is the proclamation of um, the gospel. And as Lita so beautifully says, it uh, it's it's the light, right? It's it's right. the light that uh, of God that that shines through our words, hopefully. Um, so thank you, Lita, for sharing that. You're welcome. Absolutely, uh, friends. We are at the moment of our children's moment, and uh, first, oh, passing of the peace. Yeah, we don't. Nope, that's oh, no, that's yes. So we're we're at the moment of our children's moment. Hi, Robert. Good to good to see you. Uh, and children, uh, I as I was reading uh, the passage earlier this week, I noticed how Jesus gives Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and I thought that was kind of interesting and. Uh, I wanted to show you some of my keys and some personal stories that I have with them. Uh, the This is the key to my office at church. It uh, lets me get in to the church building and my office. This is the key to my mailbox so I can get inside my mailbox. This is, um, isn't this interesting? <laughs> this is my key, the key to my car. Uh, which, um, how do you open this? See, that's more of like the traditional key. Um, but this is my key fob, which is just a wonderful modern invention. Uh, fantastic. And I have this on my keys. It says Adam's keys. And I've had that since I was about 16 because <laughs> a member of my family kept stealing my keys and I complained to my mom and she got me this thing that says Adam's keys. So I've had this for how 20 years? No, yes, a little more than 20 years, I think. I'm bad at math. I'm 41. And I had it when I was about 16 or 17. So you could probably do better math than I can. But interestingly, all of these keys allow us to get into somewhere, whether it's my mailbox or my office or my house or my car. Uh, and Jesus gives Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to be saying more about this later, but it's interesting because the one time when Peter uses these keys, 
he lets people in. He lets people into the kingdom of heaven who were always tend to be not invited into the kingdom. And so how does Peter use his keys? He uses them to welcome people in, not to keep people out. And I wonder what you might think of that. I wonder what uh, what areas in your life where you might think, I could use some keys to help people feel welcome, or I could use somebody to let me in <laughs> to help me feel welcome sometimes too. And so this is what uh, Jesus gives to Peter, the keys to a loving community, a community that often uh, stumbles, uh, makes mistakes, but is also able to look back and say, we messed up and how can we be better at loving our neighbors as we love ourselves? So children, um, thank you for being here. I'm going to pray for you now and um, join me in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for uh, the children in our lives. We ask that you bless them uh, and keep them. Um, in your holy name we pray. Amen. Now, friends, we continue with our worship service with the passing of the peace. All right. Friends, although we are physically separated as we practice social distancing, in reality, we are all connected. So we come to the point in our service where we pass the peace with one another. I invite you to open your palms like this and imagine yourself connected to everyone watching this live stream as we pass the peace to one another. Beloved of God, may the peace of Christ be with you. And, and also, and also with, you. with you. Friends, our uh, song today comes from a dear friend of mine. Um, uh, somebody that I have known for uh, many years now, and he is one of my heroes. And I have a link to a, an interview that I did with him a couple of years ago. His name is Preston Ship. And uh, for more about Preston, you can watch the, the link in the video to the description. Uh, Preston is a former prosecutor, and he had a... Um, kind of a conversion experience where he saw the system and how it was caught up in racism and how he himself was caught up in racism as well. And he was invited by some gentle, kind people out of that situation, out of his job and into something else. Uh, and he is now a criminal justice reform advocate and is doing amazing work. So if you want to learn more about Preston's work, you can uh, check out that link uh, and you can also Google him on YouTube. Uh, there have been some, uh, there's a documentary made about him that's fascinating. So um, Preston and I became friends about five or six years ago and he is also a great musician and he's got a, an offering for us today called, um, uh, the times they are a changing and uh, it is by my goodness. Why can't I remember his name? Somebody. Bob Dylan. Oh my gosh, Jeff. How could I not think of Bob Dylan? Thank you. You were on top of it. So I'm going to take us, I'm going to take us off screen and we will listen to uh, Preston. <laughs> Come gather round people wherever you roam And admit that the waters around you have grown Except if it's sin, you'll be drenched to the bone If your time to you is worth saving 
You better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone For the times, they are a changing Come writers and critics who prophesy with your pen Keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again and Don't speak too soon with the wheels still in spin And there's no telling who that it's named And the loser now will later to win For the times they are a changing Come senators and congressmen Please heed the call don't stand in the doorways, don't block up the halls For he that gets hurt will be he who has stalled There's a battle outside and it's raging It'll soon shake your windows and rattle your walls For the times, they are changing Mothers and fathers throughout the land Don't criticize what you can't understand Your sons and your daughters are beyond your command Your old road is rapidly aging Please get out of the new one if you can't lend a hand For the times, they are a changing Line it is drawn, the curse it is cast. The slow one now will let her be fast, as the present now will let her be past. The order is rapidly fading, and the first one now will later be last. For the times, they are a change. Everybody, I hope we can still be friends, even though I couldn't think of Bob Dylan's name. <laughs> that is that as you listen to that and read those lyrics, um, that is modern day scripture right there before us. Uh, even in the 1960s, it's as relevant today as ever. And you see that pattern working throughout scripture. And we're going to talk about that a little later, too. So, um, yes. Awesome. Uh, friends, we come into the point of our offering, and uh, we just want to thank you for uh, the gift that you can offer to us uh, as we continue to worship together over uh, this time. Uh, who knows how long this is going to last, but we hope to be able to continue worshiping with you even when we go back into our uh, worship space, uh, whenever that will be. So uh, this has just been a great time for us to worship with all of you, and we are grateful for your presence. Your presence with us is a gift, uh, and I want to be clear about that. Um, every Sunday, it's just so great to worship with folks from Australia and uh, Spain and um, New York and here in Portland. So thank you for being here. And uh, we also want to invite you, if you can, donate some money to us. That would be great. We just hired a new minister of justice and witness, uh, Amira Stanley. And so uh, we could really use some help uh, keeping that position going, too. So if you are able to uh, donate some funds to us, that would be so helpful. Uh, you can do that either on the Facebook page by clicking the Donate Here button. You can also go to our website to a uh, offerings button, uh, giving button. Uh, you can also send a check to our PO box, which you can find on our worship service as well. Uh, and if you are so inclined, another way that you could provide an offering is if you would like to share this video with someone you think might be interested, that would be a good way of helping us get the word out about our congregation. So everybody, uh, I will pray over our gifts uh, now. So I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these gifts 
and for the opportunity to share them. We ask that you bless them, that they might be used to your glory, to spread your peace and love and justice throughout our communities, throughout our neighborhood, and throughout the world. With them, we offer all that we have and all that we are in praise and thanksgiving to you. In the name of the living one, we say together, amen. amen. And uh, even Georgia, Brandon, welcome from Climax, Georgia. It's good to have you here uh, with, with us. So uh, friends, we will continue our worship of God with the prayers of the people. So uh, we've got a few prayers that were sent to me over the week, and I will go also go through our prayers. Um, hopefully, I will have all of them here. Uh, I can see all of them. If I miss any prayers in the chat section, uh, please forgive me. Uh, sometimes the chat section misses some prayers. I missed some prayers last week because the chat section does this weird thing. So I'm just going to get to the prayers uh, that were sent to me, and then we'll go through the chat section prayers. We pray for our dear sister, Judy Boncaro, who was hospitalized this last week after shortness of breath. We are grateful that Judy is back home. Judy, we love you. Um, we are so thankful that you are feeling better. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray for Amy, uh, whose, whose friend uh, Tiffany's 15-year-old nephew, Jake McCall, had a horrible and tragic accident, uh, which had led him to have a broken neck. Um, this was a while ago, and uh, Jake's mom, Robin, needs our prayers too. Uh, Jake, since he had this horrible accident, uh, Amy says, has become a medical miracle. Uh, we prayed for him a while ago, and uh, Jake will be coming home in about two weeks. He's moving different parts of his body that doctors said that they've never seen before with this kind of accident um, in the 20 years that they have been working in that field. So, Amy, we lift up Jake and Robin and his family. We give thanks for his ability to, um, to heal and to move. So uh, we lift them up to God. God, in your love, hear our yeah. prayers. We continue to pray for Dave's mom, Doris, who is, uh, especially at this stage in her life, uh, we lift her and Dave's family up to God. God, in your love, hear us. Yeah. Uh, we lift up our brother, Jerry. I've uh, spoken with Jerry this last week. Uh, Jerry and his wife, Carolyn. Carolyn has been in a memory uh center for a couple of years now and that memory center had a case of covid and um so uh carolyn was uh had covid and um was going to be sent to a facility uh, in a nearby city that was going to be able to deal with covid in a way that, that the memory care facility uh couldn't but tragically uh there was a a breakout of COVID at another hospital. And so all of the folks at that uh, hospital went to this facility. And so Carolyn couldn't go. Um, but it looks as though Carolyn's going to be okay. So we lift Carolyn and Jerry up to God for continued healing. God, in your love, hear our prayers. We continue to pray for Patty's friend Sue as she struggles with cancer. God, in your love, yeah, we continue to lift up Janet and her son, Bruce. Bruce died of COVID uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we lift up Bruce and Janet and their family during this difficult time. God, in your love. Yeah, your and we lift up Larry. Uh, Larry, who has been experiencing hip pain for, for a long time now and keeps getting... Um, uh, referred uh, or deferred um, from his doctors for uh, hip replacement surgery. So, Larry, we're thinking about you. We're praying for you and for your hip. Um, God, in your love. Your yeah, prayers. And now I will go through our prayers. 
Uh, Melissa offers uh, prayers of blessings for children, especially as schools are reopening. Uh, we lift up children going back to school, teachers going back to school, everybody who is uh, going to be going back to school. We lift them up to God. We lift, we pray for wisdom uh, and good uh, practices as children go back to school. God, in your love. Uh, we give, uh, whoa, 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 um, uh, Robert starts, start of another week, more, uh, COVID-19 cases in Queensland, Australia. If cases keep going up, lockdown is strongly needed. Pray for Robert and the state of Queensland. Robert, we lift you and uh, your um, this and Queensland and all of Australia up to God. God, in your love, hear our prayers. Casey was born on Bob Dylan's birthday. Oh, that's fantastic! Awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, we give thanks for Preston and his music uh, offering and for his um, for his courageous life. Uh, it certainly has been that. So God, in your love, here are Cheryl offers prayers for Adam in his senior moment. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, I don't know how that happened. I was going to write down Bob Dylan's name, but I was like, surely I will not forget Bob Dylan's name. And there it happened. So uh, thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. <laughs> God, in your love, <laughs> hear our yeah, prayers. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, any more prayers? Yeah. Uh, Anne, welcome from Maine. Good to have you with us. Uh, Cheryl offers prayers for her friend, uh, Maggie. Uh, she dislocated her uh, left hip uh, on the 14th and again on the 17th and we'll be having a total reconstruction of the hip on September 10th. Uh, so Cheryl, we lift up your dear friend Maggie up to God uh, and her hip issues. God, in your love, hear our prayers. Okay. Casey offers prayers of gratitude for getting through uh, my first week of virtual teaching. It was stressful, but we did it. Congratulations, Casey. Thank you for sharing that. We uh, continue to pray for you as you go into your second and many more weeks of teaching. Thank you for your work. And uh, we're praying for you. God and your love. Here are yeah, prayers. Yeah. Let's see. Casey offers prayers for all the people displaced by the California and Colorado wildfires and everyone fighting them. Thank you, Casey. God, in your love, hear our yeah. prayers. Uh, Allison. Allison is uh, having surgery this week. Prayers that it goes well. Also prayers for everyone struggling with suicidal ideation and mental health issues. A friend of mine tried to commit suicide this week. I hope she finds comfort. May we as a society better learn how to care for our struggling community members. Amen to that, Allison. Thank you for lifting that up. We lift up your friend to God's love. And Allison, we lift you up uh, as you have surgery this week. God, in your love, hear our prayers. Uh, Isa uh, Beltran uh, asks prayers for my family. We have to move. We've applied everywhere. There is one we're hoping to hear from on Monday. We need prayers. We'd love to get this place so we can move quickly before the first. We need to be out by the 16th. Isa, we lift you up uh, during this uh, time when you are going to be moving. Uh, we pray for a smooth transition um, and uh, God in your love. Hear our prayers. Yeah, uh, we Rebecca offers prayers for all of the animals of the forest who are dealing with the fires as well. We lift them up to God. God, in your love, yeah. hear our prayers. 
Let's see. Allison offers prayers for her aunt and uncle who have to evacuate from the wildfires in California. They lost their house to a fire two years ago. Uh, uh, Lynn also offers uh, the California fires are close to Lynn's home and affecting her health. Uh, we, uh, Lynn also prays for prayers, uh, friends in danger of losing their homes, prayers for an end to the California wildfires. God, in your love. Hear our prayers. Bethany uh, offers prayers for Vicky, who has cancer, uh, whose cancer has returned. Uh, Bethany, we lift Vicky up to God. God, in your love. Prayers. Heather says that she needs help continuing to show love to hateful people. Uh, Heather, uh, you're not alone. Um, we all could use, I could use some of those prayers too. So, uh, Heather, we lift you up in prayer. God, in your love, yeah. hear our prayers. Valette offers prayers for her family on the last leg of an exhausting journey and needing miracles and strength. Valette, we lift you and your family up to God. God, in your love, hear our yeah. prayers. Courtney offers prayers for Julie's brother, Tom and for his preservation, health, and healing. God, in your love, hear our yeah. prayers. Uh, Emily offers prayers for the stop of COVID in a college town, Auburn. All wisdom, strength to stay sober and fight depression and keep doing my music and prophetic art to heal others. Emily, we lift you up to God. God, in your love, hear yeah. our prayers. Uh, Melissa offers prayers for her mother. Since losing uh, Melissa's father last year, her mother has felt distant from God and now struggles finding the will to continue to live. Melissa, we lift you and your mother up to God uh, as you mourn the death of your father, the death of your mother's beloved husband. Uh, we lift you up to God and God's healing love. We pray together. God, in your love, hear our prayers. Yeah. Friends, those are all of the prayers that I see in our chat section. Uh, again, if I missed your prayers, um, we will be lifting them up this week. If you would like and feel so inclined, I invite you to uh, come back to this video uh, about midweek and lift up these prayers that we have here today, uh, lift them up throughout the week, uh, and that would um, that would be a good thing, I think. So I've been going back and lifting them up, and uh, it's a it's a good uh, it's a good spiritual thing to do, I think, to lift one another up in prayer over the week. Uh, we've got one more. Alan says, "I ask for prayers for my financial problems to be solved." Um, and uh, Alan, we lift we lift you up uh, to God. God, in your love, hear our prayer. So Jeff now is going to lead us in our community prayer. Uh, he will conclude each petition with God in your love, and I invite you all to respond with hear our prayers. Lita will then conclude us with the Lord's Prayer, which you may say in whichever version you are most comfortable with. So friends, let us continue in the spirit of prayer. Friends, I invite you to join me in our community prayer. I'll end each petition with... God in your love, and I invite you to respond with through our prayers. Let us pray. Blessed are you, our God, creator of the universe. You form us in your image and call us to be a blessing. You baptize us in your love and strengthen us with your Holy Spirit. We gather this day to pray for your world and for your people. We remember all those who are in suffering and in need of healing in mind, body, or soul. Comfort those who are anxious and in pain. Strengthen those who are weak and lead us to be healers of one another. God, in your love, hear our prayers. We pray for all of those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for your presence in times of grief and for the reassurance that our loved ones 
live eternally in your glory. God, in your love, hear yeah. our prayers. We pray for your creation that you have entrusted to our care, for the wisdom and will to deal with climate change. We pray for all those who are living in the midst of war and violence, as we pray for an end to all war and violence. God, in your love, hear our prayers. We pray for the leaders of this nation and all nations that they might enact policies that will spread your justice, freedom, and peace among all peoples. We remember those serving our country and those who are in danger. We pray as Jesus teaches for those we call our enemies as we anticipate the day when we have no enemies. God, in your love, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who are hungry, thirsty, without shelter or safety this day. Guide us to share of what we have so that all people may dwell in your abundance. God, in your love. Hear our prayers. We celebrate and give thanks this day for the ability to be together. We remember those who are traveling and pray for their safe return. We remember all those who rejoice as we rejoice with them. God, in your love, hear our prayers. Gracious God, there is so much noise and so many distractions in our world. And so we come before you now in a moment of silence as we welcome you and all those participating in this worship service into our hearts. Loving God, in all of these things that we have prayed, out loud and in the prayers that remain in our hearts, we lift them up to you in the name of the living one, who taught us to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jeff and Lita. I will uh, take you off screen now while we uh, have the sermon. Friends, the scripture reading today is a fascinating passage on many levels, and I will not be able to explore all of it with you, but uh, I wanted to give you what, for me, became the gist of this uh, passage and the meaning for it uh, for me during our times. Uh, and right off at the beginning of the verse of the passage, the first verse says this. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, and right away, there is something that is fascinating happening in this passage that is easy for us to miss. Because Caesarea Philippi, is a uh, is is a non-Jewish community. Jesus is going from one place to another, and he is leading his disciples, his friends, into a place that may not be comfortable for them. To speak to those who are often labeled as other. And this isn't just a first century Jewish thing. This is a human thing, isn't it? Don't we often label people as other? And it is way very difficult for us to have conversations with those that we label as other. It's a difficult thing for me to do. And I imagine that you might be having difficulties doing this as well. And Jesus leads us into these uncomfortable places. Uh, and uh, as I say this, I want to also say um, that we need to protect ourselves when we go into these uncomfortable 
places. We need to use some wisdom uh, when we go into them. Uh, it takes some courage, yes, uh, and it also takes some courage to know when to not go into these uncomfortable places. So I want you to know that you have permission to not go into these places as well, uh, to make sure that you are safe uh, and that you don't go into. Some of these places are very dangerous uh, and you do not have to go into them. But Jesus leads his disciples into a place called Caesarea Philippi. And those two words, Caesarea Philippi, are easy to go uh, over our heads. Uh, you may get a sense of what Caesarea is. Caesarea is a common name in uh, the first century for a place that is devoted to Caesar. Caesar. In this case, Caesarea Philippi was devoted to Caesar Augustus. In fact, Jesus goes into this city that is called Caesarea Philippi, and in this city there is a, uh, is a temple devoted to Caesar Augustus, who was called the Son of God. And so Jesus goes right into the heart of this place where there is this temple to a son of God or somebody who proclaimed to be the son of God. Philippi is also interesting because Philip was King Herod's, one of King Herod's sons. And Philip was after King Herod. Uh, you remember King Herod was the one who tried to kill Jesus when Jesus was born and tried to throw all of the babies into the Nile, according to the Gospel of Matthew. Herod was the one who created this temple to Caesar Augustus. But when Herod died, he left part of his territory to his sons. And one of his sons named Philip got this territory where the uh, temple to Caesar Augustus was. And Philip, now that he had power, decided to change the name of this place to Caesarea Philippi, because apparently that's what he could do, name the place after himself. <laughs> A little bit of arrogance there. Uh, but here's the point. Jesus, with this background, Jesus leads his disciples into this place called Caesarea Philippi, where you had someone. Caesar Augustus, who was called the son of God. And you have another person, uh, Herod, the great king uh, who, who created this temple. And you have Herod's son, Philip, Caesarea Philippi. And Jesus comes into this place with his disciples, this place that is loaded politically. This is what the political rulers do. This is this place is loaded with political meaning. And Jesus comes into this place and he asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Do you see how politically and religiously loaded this story is? The early Christians go into this place that is dominated by the kings, the Caesars, the emperors, the Son of God, the Messiah. And these early Christians have a protest moment. Jesus and his disciples are on a march through this town that has been dedicated to the rulers of their time, the political rulers of their time. And the disciples, through Peter, say this, no, Caesar Augustus, he's not the son of God. Uh, Philip, the son of the king, Herod, no. That's not where you're going to find the Messiah. Where are you going to find the Son of God, the true Son of God? Where are you going to find the true Messiah? Not in Caesar Augustus. Not in Philip. Not in King Herod. You're going to find it 
in this person named Jesus. Look at the radical contrast between these political rulers. Caesar and Herod ruled by force. They ruled by the sword. They ruled by violence. If somebody were to betray Herod, or if Herod felt like somebody was betraying him, what would Herod do? Would get revenge. Political revenge, friends, is anti-Christian. Any politician who lives their life as a, in a way that seeks revenge against those who they find as their enemies, that is anti-Christian. That has nothing to do with Jesus. King Herod lived that way. Caesar Augustus lived that way. Many politicians today live that way. And we have to name that that way has nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus is the one who leads us away from revenge, away from political violence against those we call our enemies, into the realm of love, compassion, uh, justice, absolutely. The work for justice is seen in Jesus. And also the work of uh, love is seen there too. And here's how I want to, uh, want to show this to you, because Jesus gives the keys of the kingdom of heaven to Peter, who he names as the rock. This is fascinating because Peter, as I mentioned earlier, is the one who Jesus calls, who has uh, little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. He says that to Peter. Peter, the rock, has cracks throughout his life when it comes to faith. Peter, the rock, is the one who betrays Jesus uh, at the end of his life. And how does Jesus, the true Messiah, the true son of God, respond to the rock who has these cracks? He doesn't come back for revenge. Even in the resurrection, he comes back to Peter and says, I know you messed up. I know you have cracks, but guess what? I'm not done with you yet. I'm not back for revenge. I'm back because I love you. And we're going to try again. That is what it means to be the rock, is to recognize that you have cracks. Peter had cracks, and Peter knew that he had cracks. And maybe it was through those cracks that the love of God was able to shine through Peter. And in this passage, Jesus gives Peter, who represents all of the disciples, he gives Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And he says that it is now your job to bind or to loose. And whatever you bind in heaven, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And here's, here is the one place where Peter used the authority of the keys. Because what we do with our power matters. What Peter did with his power, his authority, matters. And you may have some power in your life too, in your family, with your friends, at your work. What you do with that power matters. Peter could have used his power to be over and against others, but he didn't. I invite you to go after this worship service to look at Acts chapter 10. Because this is the place where Jesus, where Peter uses the keys. Peter in Acts chapter 10 has this vision where uh, there's this sheet from heaven that comes down and it's full of animals that religious, his religious tradition told him were unclean. And Peter hears this voice of God saying, take and eat. And Peter says, no, 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 no. I can't because these are unclean. And the voice of God keeps coming back to Peter and says, don't call something unclean that I have made clean. And this sinks in with Peter over time. And he begins to see that this is not about animals. This is about human beings. 
And so the one time that Peter uses his keys, he sees that no human being is to be labeled as unclean. And so what does Peter do with the keys that Jesus gives him? Peter opens the door to the church, to the realm of God, to those who were excluded, to the Gentiles. Peter says in this story that it was not lawful for him to hang out with Gentiles. But God has shown him that those laws no longer matter. The keys of the kingdom are opening the doors to everyone, no matter what our religious tradition, no matter what our religious laws say, Peter opens the door so that everyone is welcome into the kingdom of God. This is why Peter's keys, the keys that Jesus gives to Peter, is why we here at Clackamas United Church of Christ open the doors to our LGBTQIA siblings. This is why we open the doors to anyone who has felt marginalized, excluded by religious laws, because those laws no longer matter because Jesus gave Peter the keys and Peter opened the door for everyone. Can I get an amen in the chat section? This is, this is what Christianity at its best is all about because for too long, Christians have used our power, the power of the keys in order to exclude and in order to marginalize people. And that is an abuse of our power. And yes, yes, we have been caught up in that in the past. And yes, we will get caught up in it in the future. Peter failed. Peter had cracks. The church has cracks. And it is our job. I have cracks. <laughs> and it is our job as followers of Jesus to see the cracks that we have in our lives, to acknowledge them, because the height of spirituality is not that we are perfect. It's not even to try to be perfect. The height of spirituality in the Christian tradition is to know that we have all failed and that we're all loved. So friends, may you May you recognize the cracks in your lives. May you, may you recognize the God that shines God's love and God's light through those cracks that are in your life. And may you know, deep down in your bones, that you are loved now and forevermore. Amen. Welcome back, Jeff and Lita. And um, Lita, I invite you to lead us in our benediction this, this today. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and bring you peace. This day and forevermore, amen. Friends, thank you for being here. Uh, we um, want you to know that uh, God loves you. Uh, stay safe. Cause some good trouble out there. And uh, if you are so inclined, we would love for you to join us in our coffee hour, uh, which will start in a few minutes. Hopefully you can find that in uh, the description of the video. Uh, until... Until then, we invite you to join us next week at 1030 here on the Clackamas UCC Facebook page. Until then, take care. Hi, everyone. This is Adam Erickson reminding you that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome at Clackamas United Church of Christ. 
We are located at 15303 Southeast Webster Road in Milwaukee, Oregon. We are so glad that you found this podcast. All of our podcasts will always be free, but we rely on the financial support of our members and our friends. If this podcast meant something to you, you can help us out in two ways. You can share this podcast with someone you think might be interested. You can also help us financially by donating to the wonderful missions we have here at Clackamas United Church of Christ. To do so, you can go to our Facebook page, our website, or our YouTube channel and click on the Donate Here button. Our worship services start at 10.30 on Sundays, except for during the summer months when we start at 10 o'clock. If you would like more information on our church, you can visit our website at c-ucc.org. You can also reach out to me through email at adam at c-ucc.org. Until next time, grace and peace be with you.